Shall we begin? All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, BQ, and I got TW here on audio, and it's your Impact Wrestling Review for the week here at the Impact Lounge. If you're watching right now on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. If it's your, your first timer, this is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fans. So this is the way the podcast is going to work. I'm not going to ask TW how he's doing because I've already been talking to him for the last 20 minutes, so we're not going to give you that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to get right into this show. Um, we're going to review Impact. At the end, we're going to give you our thumbs up, thumbs down segment, meaning I'm going to let him know, and he's going to let me know what he thought is what the best part of this show was and what the worst part of the show was. And then we're going to get into TW's top five power rankings at the end of the show as well. So let's get into the episode of Impact. And this kicked off with a cold opening with Moose hijacking the cold opening. And this right here was one of the most entertaining things I've seen on Impact in a while. The way that he interrupted the only part i didn't like was when the voice over got a voice over guy said something like wait who's this i didn't think that sounded na natural but other than that uh this thing was done to perfection and the way they were taking the sound uh not the sound bites but the video clips of bobby Roode and all these dudes freaking hilarious what do you what do you got on this wonderful wonderful oh, I, I, I totally agree with you that was that was excellent man that was absolutely excellent the way that uh, you know, they, they, they sliced in the footage of whoever those guys were talking about from different shows. And um, and by the way, whatever that footage is, this is the stuff I always complain about. They're not doing on Impact Plus. So it does exist. We just don't see it. Anyway, but the, uh, the, the, the cold open was so good, man. It was so good. I love it because you're positioning Moose as the centerpiece of this episode and um we were kind of this this goes back to a conversation we were having off air kind of about cody and AEW, which is the idea of being the main attraction right for a lot of years in wwe john cena was the main attraction with or without the belt and right now i kind of feel like they're doing that with moose uh he's uh, josh matthews keeps emphasizing that you didn't beat anybody to win this championship, yet they're still positioning him and presenting him as a champion. And I love it. I love the way they did this. They, they did this open. Um, the voiceover guy, Barry something or other, I can't remember his name. Um, shout out to him. Shout out to the production people. I feel like this is a new uh, production team re relatively recently that's been working on these packages. This is excellent work, man. The stuff is, you know, it looks good. It's crisp. And it's, it's dope, man. I, was, I could not have thought of a better way to open the show. It is a new team from what I understand because Kevin Sullivan and, and some of the dudes left for AEW. So this is a brand new team. I can hear it in the audio, which now we can't tell because there's not people in the audience. But one of the critici criticisms for years was we can't hear the audience. We can't hear the crowd. And it sounds like the arena is dead. Well, the tapings in Atlanta, I thought you could hear the audience very crisp. And I really liked how they came out. The video packages are good. My only knock is the the choices of music. I don't think are. I think for the opening, it's good. But the the music they use in the background of the interviews and when they're cutting a commercial coming back, I don't care for that music at all. And I think it sounds super amateur when they play it in the background of the interviews. It's a little generic. It's definitely a little generic. Yeah, but other than that, this uh. I, for me personally, Moose is the best part of Impact right now. I'm I'm so invested in this uh, TNA thing that he's doing, and it is it's wild when you remember him turning from heel to babyface when he was with you know doing the thing with Mike Bennett and everything, and when he was a babyface when he was the Grand Champion, he was one of the most driest characters on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like you do this heel turn and his charisma is just coming from all angles and he hasn't, he hasn't missed on anything. Uh, you know, every time they do some kind of segment, he did all those segments for Kent Shamrock and um, those segments where he was like 
shooting hoops and playing tennis and all that stuff. And it's just right. all that stuff was really good. <laughs> right. It's always gold. It's always hilarious. Um, man, Moose Moose is a a monster right now, and he needs that world title, that that legit like world title run. Um, it's crazy because people say, well. Michael Elgin is the one who will probably take it off Tessa Blanchard, but I, I'm not trying to push off this Moose World. I mean, I guess now he kind of has a belt, but I'm not trying to push off this Moose Impact World Champion for another several. Like, I want that to happen sooner than later, you know? Yeah, you know what? So I I, I have mixed feelings about that, right? So it's for, there's something about when someone gets the world title. It's like the ch- the chase is always so much more appealing. You're always so much more interested in the chase. Tessa is a perfect prime example. I was all gung-ho about Tessa getting the title. I love the idea of trying something different. And you know what? We've tried it. The shine is off, and I'm ready to move on. And so that happens a a lot of times with a lot of people. I remember, you know, a lot of people when um, last year when Kofi Kingston won the WWE Championship, you know, a lot of people were like, Two weeks after you won it, they were like, all right, this is getting old. And I'm like, it, it just, you know, that's just the way that people are. But I, so in the case of Moose, I like what he's doing now because he's a feature of the show, right? Like this whole segment, th- there's so much conversation that's stemming from Moose with that TNA title. And people are like, oh, are they going to go full on? impact versus tna you know where are they going where is this going to go and he gets to be the centerpiece of this conversation to me that makes you more of a player than necessarily having the world title because i feel like when you have the world title the conversation changes to oh are you a draw how's the company doing with you as the world champion right right it's a stupid conversation that's based in you know eras gone by but what he's doing now, I love. He's a feature player. He does have a visually. He's a champion. He's treating that 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 belt like a championship, and they're talking about it like a championship. Although they keep reminding us that he didn't beat anybody for it. But I like it. I like it. I would rather him. Keep, I would rather him do this for a year, right, and then maybe go after the the Impact title. Um, and let's just. Let's 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 ride this out because to me I feel like this this gives him like a um, a niche in the show. True. That other people can't necessarily fill. Yeah, this like this is more entertaining than an actual title run would be. Is basically what you're getting at. Right. Because Absolutely. the the delusion of Moose is what I don't know if I want to call it delusion, but the delusion of him as this champion that he's won something that it's there's there's such genuine comedy in that too and it's you know it's so funny that you said that and you use that that phrase delusion because i was thinking about this yesterday i was telling you again sorry guys this conversation we had before the show started but like the i was i was thinking about this exact thing and i used the term in my head delusion but i was like is it delusion or is it just not giving an f because it's one of those things where it's like you could say Moose is delusional, but I don't. He's not crazy. He's just you're not gonna take it from me. So I'm the champion because I said I'm the champion. You know what I mean? And like, so I love that. To me, that adds to the Moose thing. It's not like, and again, it follows along consistently with all of the kind of um, the different uh, iterations of his character that he's done. Right? Like, I think back to. Um, a year, a, a couple, a year, like a year and a half ago, when it was Moose and Killer Cross and Austin Aries, and Moose was wearing like the fly African robe, and stuff <laughs> like that, and it was like to a lot of people it looked ridiculous, but he was rocking it so fresh with like so much confidence that it was, it was like it was almost ironic, you know what I mean? And it's like at the end of the day, I'm gonna take off these clothes you think look funny. And you still can't do nothing with me because I'm Moose. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Um, so I, I love it. It's like you could say this guy is delusional, but is, is it delusional or is it just not giving an F because I'm a badass? Yeah, and I thought the way he took himself out of the world title tournament was it just furthered how effective this angle is. Right. Y- you know, he could he could have stayed in the tournament like, okay, I want two belts, but 
like who in their right mind if you you know it's you know i'm i'm out of the world title tournament i already got the i already got this i got this world title so um those little things i, I always talk about the little things that impact has to do um and one thing i found i found really funny and it's funny that madison actually said something when josh was like he did you know this isn't a real title he didn't beat anybody for it she brought up weren't you carrying around a title that you didn't beat anybody for <laughs> she did <say> right <laughs> the impact grand championship <laughs> yeah you know and they obviously you know he they took the opportunity to take a shot at billy corgan by doing that he goes oh who came up with that so you know th <laughs> that just that solidifies what i've been saying lately that they're clearly trying to um ignore the creations of billy corgan like he didn't you know he kept this company afloat at one point, and I think he had some good ideas too. So I'm not really, and I'm a big NWA fan, so I'm not really into this. Let's dog him on screen, or uh, or pretend he didn't come up with any of these ideas. Uh, yeah. But yeah, good, good, uh, good catch by Madison on that as well. Josh was really struggling in the match with Moose and Suicide when he was doing the play-by-play -play because he was kind of struggling with. I don't want to say he was struggling, but he was he was flip flopping a little between, oh well, this belt means nothing, and then oh this is the prestigious TNA title, and then he'll go back to oh it was in a warehouse like it was collecting dust or something. I mean, how prestigious can it be when you're right? He he was going back and forth, which I thought that was like really interesting because at some point during the match with him with Moose and Suicide, you know, Josh would kind of say oh uh, and. Suicide almost becomes a TNA <laughs> Madison Rain would catch him. She'd be like, but I thought it wasn't a real title. You know what I mean? It's a, um, th th their pairing is a little bit of an underrated thing that's been a positive for the show. Yeah. You know, they obviously have a good natural chemistry. Um, and, you know, Madison Rain, you know, maybe this is because this is Impact and, you know, Impact doesn't get as much publicity as other shows, but she's doing well. Like, you know, I said this before, but... You know, she's not over the top like Amal Ranallo. She's not trying to, she's not, she's not being like hokey comedy, but she's good. Like she's confident in what she's saying. She's not stumbling over her words. If you, if you watch NXT and you hear Beth Phoenix, you know, all, she, she tries to insert herself into the commentary and it seems like she's always waiting permission to, to jump in. And I'm not saying that's her fault because I've heard horror stories about the way that WWE gets produced in their ear, uh, in their ear set by, by the people backstage. Um, so I'm not suggesting that it's easy to be an announcer on WWE TV, but it just doesn't sound natural. Madison Rain is a very natural part of the, cover, the, the commentary conversation. This isn't your traditional play-by-play -play and color commentary. It's more of just a back and forth between a wrestler and a guy who's not a wrestler, right? So, right. Um, I, I like it. She's good and she's credible, and you know what I mean. Like I, I, I'm willing to stick with this broadcast team for you know till till it gets them. I really hope that this is. I would love if this was the team going forward. Everyone knows I cannot stand Don Callis on commentary, and especially if Don Callis is going to do this aftershock show. It would make absolutely no sense for him to do color commentary during the episode and then uh, recap the show after. But I say that, and Josh Matthews has done commentary on the show and recap the show after um, when they, you know, they've had several attempts at trying to do this after show thing. But they're very natural. They've they've sounded good every episode as a pairing. The only episode that I I thought was so bad was Rebellion Night One. I said that on Twitter. Uh, here on the pod, I said that was, that's some of the worst impact commentary I've heard in a while, and I, I stand by that. But other than that, um, every show they've they've really delivered on, in my opinion. Um, did you watch this at the aftershock show? I did, I did. So I did an upload on YouTube where I said, if this is just a kayfabe review show, no one's going to check in because. It's you, so good. Yeah, I just want to make this point. They either. Are recapping the show for the people who already watched it and don't need to don't need to know the results, or they're recapping it for people who didn't watch and now have no reason to watch the show. So um, I question who their target audience is 
doing this. Um, I don't think a kayfabe review show works. So I watched 30 seconds of it, and I can't judge it based on that, but give me your thoughts. All right, so <clears throat> I actually thought about what you said, right, about a kayfabe review show, why that wouldn't work, and you had you made valid points, but here's where I think this works. Um, I don't know if you ever watched uh, Talking Smack. They used, to do, uh, they used to do Talking Smack and Raw Talk early in the days of the WWE Network. It was basically a kayfabe post-show that would come on after SmackDown or Raw. And <clears throat> this, was, this show actually functioned as a great vehicle to further storytelling and just through the purpose of letting characters kind of get over on their own. So you would have characters that would come on and you basically give them, you know, a five minute interview segment to kind of get themselves, you know, get themselves more over, get more character development. Because when you go out on 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 screen, you have to do what's in your script. Right. Um, it, in particular, Talking Smack really helped the Usos to totally transform their character. Right. Transformed it from. You know, from the you know the, these colorful Samoan sidekicks into you know street guys. You know what I mean? Right. They, they really just developed just being able to talk and 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 free flow, right? Um, and I'm sure you've seen the clip circulating of the Miz where he gets in Daniel Bryan's face and almost cries like a little girl. Yeah. And, and, uh, but like, but so many people loved it, right? They loved it. It's like I'm I'm the Intercontinental Champion, right? But so many people love that and. I think that that type of uh, of 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 of, of kind of unfiltered opportunity to just kind of get your character over is is great content. It's great content. I was um, I was looking at um, being the elite, um, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, man. You know, I look at those videos that Impact had, like, each of their kind of superstars post, like, hey, this is what I'm doing during quarantine, right? And right. it was just like, hey, I'm, I'm doing push-ups at my house, and Sammy Callahan, he put some character into what he was doing, but everybody else was just kind of like, you know, blah, and I'm like, this is not, like, shareable content. Nobody's going to care about this. And then I saw, like, being the elite, and that's not high budget. They're shooting that shit on iPhones. And but but what they're doing is they're doing like hokey stuff that furthers their character, you know. And I was like, this is I'm like, this is just a, a matter of effort. I was like, Impact needs to do more stuff like this. And so what I saw on the show last night, the aftershock show, the first couple minutes is you know Don Callis and um, uh, Jimmy Jacobs. Yeah, just, just sitting there talking. And I'm like, all right, well this isn't doing anything for me. But then my boo. Taya pops in, and, and um, it was basically a Zoom call. It, it was a Zoom call because you can see the little, uh, the little Zoom identifier in the bottom, uh, bottom left hand corner. Yeah. But um, but so 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 you had you had these two guys on a Zoom call. Then they put Taya on the Zoom call, and then they had Rosemary on the Zoom call. And like the way that it was kind of set up was Rosemary was supposed to be the guest, but Taya kind of hacked in. But once she hacked in. She was just doing her tie thing, right? Like, uh, uh, a lot of times when you get wrestlers on an interview or a podcast, I think they can't decide if they're being real or if they're staying in character. And this straight up in character. And to me, it works because now everybody's not going to be great at it, but this is also why this works, is you give, you give these guys a chance to see how good they are at just being their character. Um, so I liked it. You know what I mean? Like if you, if, it wasn't long, it was probably 30 minutes or so. Uh, I was ironing my work clothes while I was watching it and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't long. And so, um, it, yeah, I mean like if you get a few minutes, like I said, it's worth it. You know, you're, you're not going to, there's no new information, right? They, they, they basically, just, they, they brought on Taya and she just, you know, she just talked for a little bit, um, in character, right? About what's going on with her and. Why haven't we seen you? And then Rosemary comes in and she's like, she's like, oh, are you are you hiding from us? <laughs> and, you know, they go back and forth doing their thing. And it was entertaining. It was entertaining. You know what I mean? So I like it. Um, you know, can they do something newsworthy on there once in a while? Sure. 
but I think ultimately it's a good supplement to having just watched Impact, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think, and, and I think that's good. I think that's really good because we know these Impact shows are taped um, and it's good, to, it's good to kind of come in and just give us something after the show. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it. I'm here for it. I've been watching on Twitch the past couple of weeks and I've enjoyed the Twitch experience. So, um, yeah, this, this works for me. I'm a fan of the show, and um, I'm going to keep watching going forward. When it came to this first episode, I would have really, really liked to see them. And this is um, Marketing 101. When you have a new show, a new product, and you put out that initial press release, you know, hey, we got Impact Aftershock, I would have liked to s them give us a reason to watch it. When you're just saying, hey, we got an after show, and the initial announcement is when the the, the, high, the largest amount of eyes are on it. And when you yeah. put that initial announcement out and you're just saying, hey, Aftershock, tune in after the show, mm -hmm. you don't really give anyone a reason. And I saw the, the YouTube numbers today were like 7,000 people that watched the show. Um, and when you're talking about a, a YouTube channel has three and a half million subscribers, um, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's yeah. a really... A, low engagement number. So I don't know what the number looks like now, but I just think, you know, if you would have given us a real reason, say, hey, we're going to have guests. I mean, later in the week, they were like, well, Rosemary's going to stop by. Well, man, you should have let us know in the initial press release because now half the people saw the second, you know, press release that came out. Right. So, you know, I would have just liked to say, hey, we got these people coming on and this is why it's different. Like when you put a new box of cereal you know, a new commercial comes out for a box of cereal. They don't just be like, hey, here's freaking magic nuts and <laughs> sugar sugar nuts, you know, you know, come buy it now. They'll be like, hey, this is what it tastes like. This is right. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, I just would I would have liked to see a real the why yeah. the why we should watch it. Um, no, you're, you're totally right. Um, the you know. The, the marketing game has been lacking. You know what I mean? The marketing game has been lacking. I am, I find that I myself am more content oriented um, in terms of like, do I like the content? But the reality is that those other things matter, right? Like what you're talking about matters. Are you making this feel like a big deal? Is this something that people are going to be talking about online after it gets done? Can you, you know, because I think that's a big thing that, you know, people love about WrestleMania season, right? That's right. When WWE gets good. That's when they bring in mainstream celebrities. That's when your friends that haven't watched in years are talking about it again. Oh, is Undertaker coming back? You know? And so, um, so yes, like, they have to do a much better job, I think, of making things feel like a big deal. Um, I think, you know, you certainly didn't want to oversell this, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If they had oversold this, that might have been a little bit of a... People might have had some, some legit complaints about that. But I agree. They do have to They have to find ways to make things feel like a big deal. Because if AEW did the exact same thing, they would have tried to make it seem like a big deal. They would yeah. put some sort of newsworthy announcement. They would have been like, oh, we're announcing our next cage match in Delaware or something like that. You know what I mean? They would, they would have put some sort of, uh, of announcement attached to it. And yep. that's something I think Impact should probably do more. That was that was going to be my next point. Um, say, hey, we've got this for your initial, you're not not for every episode, for this initial announce, the initial show. Hey, here's a big announcement about Slammiversary or, um, right. you know, I'm, I'm just throwing that name out there. But, you, you know, usually you want to you want to add some kind of big something really newsworthy to it and, and try to generate the buzz but instead people were confused on and, and speculating on what they think it could be and that's that's um just poor promotion poor marketing uh skills so also impact if y'all out here if y'all are listening to this if this finds your beautiful ears holla at us okay we'll produce this show for you <laughs> yeah there we go there it is hell yeah we'll definitely step in let's get into the episode itself of impact I enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll say, honestly, from top to bottom, uh, are there some things I would, as a fan, would have liked to see a little bit different, but I actually really enjoyed the episode. I thought when they announced the card for this that it had a lot of potential. I thought it looked like it was going to be pretty good. And 
you know, sometimes they put out a card of matches and it looks really good. And sometimes they put out a card like last week, the match, you know, when they announced what was going on, I was like, I don't care about this episode. This one, you know, this one gave us a little bit more of a reason. They, they let us know what matches we were going to see getting a couple debuts. So that's, um, that's really cool. So let's get into the first match of the evening. So this was Madman Fulton versus Hernandez. I talked about this last week, this, bracket this tournament is very the left side of the bracket was i mean i guess once you took moose off it was a little more even but the left side of the bracket was what much more main event ready than the right side of the bracket and this was one of those matches here where you're like well i kind of don't care who wins because this person isn't going to win the whole thing that they're not going to make it to the finals we already knew that but but um but but for a but for a big man versus big man match, I thought it was really good. I thought Hernandez has looked a lot better to me in this return than he did when he was with the OGs. I think it's because with the OGs, you know, they kind of wrestled a couple squash matches on TV, um, and then we just saw him wrestle LAX every you know every other match besides that. So now we're seeing Hernandez wrestle different people, and we can see that he can still go a little bit. And of course, Madman Fulton loses. OVE loses again. Um, <laughs> you know, and obviously this is part of the storyline now. So you know, we we all knew that this was probably coming. And I think what one of the things about their losing streak that kind of bothers me, other than that they're just losing, is that they're losing when it's. How does that make sense that Madman Fulton, with two people on the outside, lo- lose to one person? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's where I'm kind of like, God, man, they, they just look like they can't beat anybody. If, if you kick, kicked OVE, you know, they've done that a couple of times. They eject them. That's, you know, that's one thing. But, yeah. um, you know, they're obviously trying to give Hernandez a little bit of a push here. I mean, I don't I don't see him wrestling for the world title anytime soon. A L- little bit of a push. Uh, but what do you got on this one, this uh, opening match? Well, so, again, I think this is one where uh... – the storytelling, the, the longer-term storytelling here is what's happening with OVE, right? Where are they going? Are they lost now that there's no Sammy? You know, will they, will one of them emerge as a leader? Is someone else going to come and lead them? Will they, you know, break apart? What's happening with OVE? That's the real story that's being told here. And Hernandez moving forward in the tournament is just kind of a vehicle there, right? Like, it's just, you... It's a step to keep telling the OVE story, so that makes um, so that made perfect sense to me. Um, you know, I, I think Madman Fulton looks like he has, you know, all the potential in the world. It, it, it just depends on what they want to do with him, right? Like, I mean, you look at this guy; he's a monster, and I love his entrance. How he comes out, and they kind of have like a silhouette of him, and he's like whipping his dreads around, and I'm like, man, that shit looks wild. Like, just the, just like the silhouette of this big crazy dude yeah he's like whipping his crazy dreads around and um i so I, I i love that um but you know hey the match was it was uh, i mentioned before hernandez is definitely one of my favorites from the past era of tna uh you know i really i, I liked when they were starting to do something with him but you know it seems like most of the times they've had start and stop with hernandez they start to do something with him and then they just you know have gotten away from it and um, he can go. Just like you said, he can go. He can go. He can wrestle. He can do a lot of cool stuff for a guy his size. And he's a person that you can always plug in, right? So, But I still see him as <clears throat> moving forward in the tournament just to set up the person. You know, like, you have to have, like, a certain amount of heels versus baby faces moving forward. Yeah. Like when we originally looked at that bracket – it looked like all the hills were going to move forward. Right. Uh, but that's not, that's not wrestling, right? It's not wrestling. <laughs> no. So, uh, so you had to get some unexpected wins from some baby faces. And so that's kind of what we got here. Yeah. Um, I was going to make a point here and I, I kind of forgot what it was. Um, oh, no. I was going to say about Madman Full. And it's weird that he was even thrown into this tournament because and th- this is where, we, you know, we both watch AEW, man, and they have the – the rankings and, and and so when they when people get title opportunities and stuff it, it makes sense you're, you're you're saying and and the story you're telling this whole time is that OBE can't beat anybody the story you're telling in commentary 
well, why is he in the tournament for the world title, number one contender? You know, you know what I mean. Like, so that's something that, that's totally yeah, yeah. So, um, d- doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. But we we got to give them a pass a little bit too because they don't have a full roster for these tapings. But uh, overall, for a big guy versus big guy match, I thought it was really good. And I understand they're telling a story. I just I'm not really big on Madman Fulton losing to <laughs> right. <laughs> but but but. Fernandez is like one of those people where it's like, if you're going to lose, you know, you're losing to somebody with some credibility. Yeah. So, uh, Hernandez moves on in a tournament and he's going to face the winner of possibly Ken Shamrock versus Rhino. Here's something. So, you know, I brought up AEW a second ago and we both watch this show. They, they're doing a tournament right now, the TNT tournament and i made a comment a a few weeks ago that there was an episode of AEW that i really liked and i said man there was so much on that show and you even mentioned it earlier with something that impact can do they're not budget things it's their effort things Mm -hmm. and what did they do for this tournament every single wrestler in the tournament had a video package before their first round match yep of why not just a, a video package of them walking around the, the city or whatever. It was a video package of why they needed to win that tournament. Yeah. And what that title meant. And it was just, it's such a little thing. But if you think about this first round matchup, we've only heard Elgin talk. Right. Uh, I guess you could say Sammy, but um, Rohit Raju. Aside from that. You know, they just gave us a list of matches and say, "Hey, here's what's going to happen." The only person who, who, the only two people who have who conveyed that they need to win this tournament were Rohi Raju and Michael Elgin. So again, these are just little things that you can do to make make something more important. You know, have people talking a little bit. Yeah, no, but it's, mm-hmm. it's um, it's paint by numbers storytelling, right? Like, I mean. You, you know, you, you look at the circumstances, you got to, you got to take TV, you got to get some TV in the can, um, you have a limited roster, what do you do? You do a tournament, right? And again, it's still, it, to me, this actually, this has been done very well. I mean, listen, you, you, when you do a tournament, everything means something, right? So, like, you can take guys who haven't normally been getting fo- um, a lot of attention, a lot of focus, and you can start telling their story. Like you said, why is it important to you to win this, win this tournament? You know, why is it important to you to get this shot? You know, what will that mean for you? You get character development, you advance the storyline, and you get the viewer invested, and it's not, you know, it's not hard. You don't have to do something crazy. You just, you know, sit the person down in front of the camera and tell us in character why this is important. And it works. Like it, th- That's what NXT does all the time. NXT will have, um, they'll have like one big match that they're advancing, right? So it's like, we know that the champion is going to face this guy at the pay-per-view. Here's a video package on these guys. Then it'll be like, there's another match. You're going to see both of the people in this that are going to be in this match in separate matches, then it'll be here's two squash matches where we're just inter- where we're just you know introducing uh, character or building characters, and it's good TV. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to overthink it. You know, one of the um, negative sim- uh, after effects of the Monday Night War is the feeling that you have to pack your show with you know, must-see television. Well, the problem is, if you do that, then you end up running through all your good matches. Yeah. Right? You end up blowing stuff off. Whereas, you know, I think NXT has kind of set a good bar. Hey, let's build to some, to, you know, to, to four really good quarterly shows, and let's just go balls out on those quarterly shows. And it works. You know what I mean? It works because you take the time to get each character over, um, I kind of hate that term because it's, it's like an insider term. Yeah. Most people don't really know what it means. But you take the time to get the audience invested in each character and why it matters to them to win, and then you give us the match. It's, 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 it's a simple formula, and it works. 
Exactly. It's real, 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 real simple. And uh, hopefully we just see more. They're doing a pretty good job with video packages and stuff. But, the you know, little things like this. Why do I need to win this match? Michael Elgin cuts a promo um, claiming he's going to be the number one contender again. So j just as, as I said, him and Roji, Rohit were the only people that were like, we have to win this tournament. Everyone else is just kind of there. And then we get an OVE segment where they are arguing backstage. And again, there's a story being told that they're, you know, they can't beat anybody. Um, and then crazy Steve, I, I kind of liked what they did here with crazy Steve, you know, um, it's good to see Steve back on TV after having his debut. I don't know if you saw my upload earlier that I did this morning, but I've made a very bold prediction that the leader of OVE is actually going to be, and, and if you, it hit me watching the opening match between Fulton and Hernandez, almost, I was almost reading in between the lines of the way Madison Rain was saying, oh, OVE, wh why does everyone keep saying they need a leader? They don't need a leader. They're fine. Like she was hyping them up, deflecting the chance, you know, the fact that they need a leader, le uh, excuse me, need a leader. My bold prediction is that Madison is actually going to lead these guys. She's from oh. Ohio. <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Madison is doing really good at what she's doing. <laughs> uh, I, you know, so the thing about Madison Rain, like, she's always been, like, good, but not, like, oh, man. Like she, she's good. She's solid for whatever you need her for. She can deliver on it, but <clears throat> she's not like a jump off the screen character, really, in any type of way, right? Even when she does like her, you know, queen bee locker room leader, it's really just like I'm annoying, right? Like that's really what it is. It's just like I'm annoying, and that's not to me. That's not the leader of OBE. Okay. I'm annoying, right? No, the leader of OBE is I'm like I'm like the sinister person with my finger on the button. Uh, I'm gonna talk shit and start shit, and I'm gonna unleash this monster on you. You know what I mean? If you uh, if you if, if you try to buck back, and that's not Madison Rain, man. Unless listen, unless she's got a level in her, uh, uh, unless she's got like a dark side character in her that we haven't seen, I don't see that being a good fit for the Madison Rain that we know. So. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying what? it would be a great fit, I, but I could see that being uh, Nevaeh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I've been pushing for Nevaeh to lead him for a long time, but it's just the way that she debuted, where she's kind of linked up with Havoc. I just can't see a storyline where it's like she just kind of walks in the room one day and she's like, "Hey, I'm I'm taking over." I mean, if she came over, it's like if she if it was like a surprise appearance. You know, maybe the camera shows her feet and goes all the way up, and it's, I don't know. I would feel like for her to lead, o, lead OBE, it would have to be a surprise appearance, just like her surprise appearance for Havoc, where she just kind of showed up. If she would have showed up during OBE wrestling or something, you know, that would make sense. But I don't know. This is just, I hate to fantasy book, but I'm thinking, okay, Madison Rain was the only person who knew who Nevaeh was because they're all from Ohio, and then she's invested in this thing against havoc and that's I, that's why i was just like man it, it's all like linking together in some weird way i can't quite put the pieces together but you're probably right though you're probably right i mean like you uh you know you're you're good at kind of seeing these little these little easter eggs that uh could be going somewhere yeah so we'll see i i i, I could be totally wrong and if i'm if i'm wrong that's fine i'm not gonna I'm, I'm not saying this is absolutely what I think will happen, but let's move on to the next match. This is Kylie Ray versus Tasha Steeles. And man, Kylie Ray was such a great addition. Uh, I, I can't say anything. She's so freaking smooth in the ring. I just really enjoy watching her wrestle. So we get the debuting Tasha Steeles. I, I don't know if you watch NWA or not, but Tasha Steeles has been part of NWA for a while. And I'm assuming she may be signed a six month contract. Cause that's the only thing that makes sense as far as when she debuted in NWA, because they said she did sign there. So maybe it was a very, very short term deal. She was a baby face in NWA. She was teamed up with Allison K and, um, God, I can't remember this other girl's name to save my life, but she, um, she um, uh, Thunder Toaster, Thunder, Thunder Rosa. No, not Thunder Rosa. No, cause Thunder Rosa is, I don't know. They, they blur. Oh, by the way, uh -huh. know, I did, so I haven't been watching. I haven't been watching uh, NWA, 
But one thing I did notice about NWA is that Molina got thick. And, um, <laughs> boy, I was not mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Molina, if you're out there. It looks good on you, girl. No, they they had a they had a feud going. It was Mol- Molina, Thunder Rosa, and Marty Bell against Allison K, Tasha Steeles, and another girl that it just it just escaping me what her name was. But anyway, so Tasha Steeles was part of this, you know, um, kind of on Allison K's team, but she was always a I don't want to say a third wheel. She right. she did not feel like an important part of it. Um, she wrestled Thunder Rosa a couple times, and it, she looked promising. But I mean, they were almost like squash matches. And um, so now it appears she's a part of the knockouts division. You know, they say they've signed her. Josh Matthews said in an interview that she's going to be a big part of the company going forward. Uh, I think she's a talented girl. I've, you know, from all the times I've seen her wrestle, wrestle, I haven't seen anything like stand, like jump out at me, like future superstar type of thing. But, but she definitely has talent and looks like she's a part of the knockouts roster. Uh, Looks like she's, I guess going to be a, a heel. And I think that's probably a better fit for her than the baby face role. NWA had her in and she was actually on this episode of NWA. that came out today. I, I haven't seen that match yet. What was she that? Doing the old, the old ravishing Rick Rude from the attitude there. Right, right. She did a tweet saying that she's on, on two shows. So I, I'm thinking Billy Corgan probably didn't allow her to come to impact. So I'm thinking she, uh, you know, had a contract that ran out or something. We, we don't know exactly. And, even though I, I'm connected with some people, sometimes within the company, contract stuff is not anything that I have any knowledge on whatsoever. All I can do is really speculate. And this match, Kylie Ray versus Tasha Steeles, um, good seven-minute match. But Tasha Steele loses in her debut to Kylie Ray. And I liked it. I, I could watch Kylie Ray wrestle that blow-up doll that Kenny Omega was wrestling. Um, I, I love her. So what do you got on this one? Um, I really liked it. I really liked Tasha Steeles. Uh, when I first saw Tasha Steeles, my first thought was, is that Big Swole? I thought, <laughs> um, uh, just because of the way that she comes down to the ring, she kind of danced her way down to the ring, and she has like a little bop that she does kind of all throughout a lot of the match, a lot of her mannerisms. I thought that was like Big Swole. I was like, I just, I, I had to like double check and make sure that, you know, it wasn't the same person. But, um, uh, Big Swole is a lot bigger than her, but again, I just wasn't sure. Just like again, the, the ring interest looked almost exactly the damn same. So, um, so I had never seen Tasha Steeles before, and I really like this. I like this. Uh, she could wrestle. You know, a lot of times when they get the first time you see a knockout, a lot of times, you know, they look super, you know, super unseasoned. You know, you get yeah. like, a lot of people that are messing up moves. I'm going for a suplex when you're going for a clothesline and like all of this stuff, but no, she can wrestle. And, um, you know, Kylie Ray, she's growing on me, man. I gotta tell you, I, I didn't, I didn't know much about her. Um, but she can wrestle and she's in great shape. Man. Yeah. She really like, you know, she looks like an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and, 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 uh, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was a good debut. I always say that, the best match is one where both the winner and the loser can come out of it looking stronger. And I think that happened in this match. So it was a good debut for both of them. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more and more of Tasha Steeles. And I would say this, I think the style that they wrestled is one that's going to lend to more crowd reaction. Once the crowds actually come back, if people just get used to seeing them do their thing, the way they're doing it right now, then the crowd is going to know the act, so they'll be reacting to it once they're seeing it in person. So I love what they're doing. Um, like I said, I like I like the style that she wrestles, and uh, I think they actually have really good chemistry. Um, you know, I don't want them to do something where they have these two wrestle every week, but uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was a really good match. I thought they both looked really good, and um, yeah, it's it's good to see you know, quality additions to the knockouts division. I think my only knock on Tasha Steeles was I, f- I saw some mannerisms a little bit like Kira Hogan. And then even at one point she was talking, it sounded like her. Mm-hmm. So um, there's some similarities, but they're, they're also vastly different as well. Uh, yeah. So, you know, um, 
we'll see what they do with Tasha going forward. But uh, she, def, definitely a solid addition. And, and, and as like like you said, the match they were clean. She wasn't missing anything. She wasn't botching anything. You know, it was it was clean, and um, they both definitely looked strong with it. So Rohit Raju cuts a promo afterwards that I thought was was really really excellent. Um, it had me hyped for his match. You know, as I said a couple times already, he was one of the couple people who who relayed to us that they need to win this tournament. And, you know, we'll, we'll get to his match here in a second. This is, can't wait to talk about this. But um, after this, um, Kylie runs in a Susie. So I thought that was funny when she said, I'm Kylie again. And she's like, I like, I liked your match, Kylie again. <laughs> you know, Sue so, so Young... Sue has re-signed with the company, and that's something I'm I'm really excited about because I love the Susie character. I've said in the past that you know sometimes my girlfriend watch wrestling with me; she's not super interested in it. But when right. Susie comes on, she's always real into Susie. She's always it's Susie, it's Susie, you know. Um, so I brought up this point on one of my uploads the other day was was um, when Laurel Van Ness left the company. When uh, Scarlett, the hell's her name? Scarlett Bordeaux, when she left the company, they had spent all these months developing these characters and then gone. And that's what I felt like when and they said, oh, well, Susie, Sue Young's a free agent. Now. I'm like, you mean we just sat through months and months of Susie and what they're doing with Sue and Havoc and now she's gone? So when they when they said she resigned, I was really really excited about that so i'm glad she's back the next match was jessica havoc against the debuting kimberly kimberly's music is excellent whoever's right now impact is knocking out of the park with the theme songs you know like the tjp follow ball one is really good the triple xl one is really good sammy's new one is really good kylie ray's new one is really good uh they're really they're really killing it with these so i'm Enjoying the themes. I thought her hers was uh, really excellent. My first takes on her was that when she came out, I thought she looked very TV ready. She looked very comfortable. And yeah. at first, I was like, "Well, she, you know, she's fresh off the indies." But I'm like, "Oh, no, well, she actually did have that NXT time. I think Abby Lath or something along those lines was her her name. But she had the you know better than me. But she had the NXT time, so she's obviously been fine tuned going through that system. But I thought she she looks good on on television the way that she came across her presentation her just ring entrance and everything and then you know the match itself kind of caught us off guard because i'm thinking in my head there's no way two debuting knockouts are going to lose in the same night but then i'm like but they don't make havoc lose all that often you know that's the other thing i thought as well rosemary sir struggles to beat her um more more often than not and but i like the way they you know, threw in the brass knucks and all that kind of kind of old school. Nevaeh shows up again, so there's intrigue with Nevaeh, and then how does Kimberly factor into all this? But you know, she gets the win. And what do you got on this knockouts encounter? So Kimberly is going to have to grow on me. Uh, <laughs> I think she's, you know, she's definitely a smooth wrestler. I give her credit for that. Um, you know, once again, another person who, you know. Working uh, with somebody on TV who we hadn't seen a work with on TV before, and it was a smooth match. So that was good. Um, it, you know, I, I probably think that's probably, um, you know, a little bit of that NXT seasoning. You know, NXT has probably the best women's roster in wrestling right now, uh, and, and they've been doing it for a little while, right, with, like, Sasha Banks and Bayley and Charlotte and Asuka and just, you know, like, all these excellent women wrestlers right so if, if kimberly had a chance to work in that group like that that dojo if you will for a little while you know i think that's that's nothing but a good thing um and it, it shows right so she was a you know the wrestling was smooth and i was very surprised to see her get a win over habit um it's one of those tough things about wrestling right it's like you know you can't win all the time but if you invest in making somebody look like a big deal it should mean something when you beat them, right? Um, and just like you said, Havoc doesn't lose a whole lot. So for Kimberly to beat Havoc here, you know, it tells me that they plan on doing something with Kimberly. They plan on making her a feature piece. And so, yeah, 
I mean, I'm open to seeing what's next from her. You know what I mean? Like I said, she hasn't necessarily, um, she hasn't jumped off the screen as like somebody I have to, you know, I need to, you know, don't go to the bathroom yet. Kimberly's coming on. You know what I mean? Like she hasn't, <laughs> she hasn't gripped me in that way yet. Um, and so let's just, you know, but I definitely am open to seeing more of her, you know, like just let, you know, let, let's, let's see what you got. Yeah, absolutely. So she, uh, good debut for her. We had a couple good debuts with these knockouts. After this, we got locker room talk with Madison Rain, and <laughs> and the swing man. And this, you know, I don't want to sit there and like beat this dead horse every week, <laughs> but I don't understand his inclusion in this segment. <laughs> it's. He, do, he, I, I, so I came up with this. I was talking to um, Lewis, who does podcasts here on the on the Impact Lounge. I was talking to him this morning, and I said, you know, he he's he also has an issue with Johnny Swinger on screen all the time. Mm-hmm. I came up with a with a conclusion. I think that Impact's YouTube numbers, when it comes to Johnny Swinger segments early on, were probably favorable hits, favorable mm-hmm. numbers, and. I think they looked at that and said, okay, we just, now we got to give them more Johnny Swinger. Now, if that is the case, sometimes when you get a, a larger number of hits on, on on YouTube with the, with the product that they do and a, the visual product and the wrestling and the gimmicks, it's not always a good thing. Like sometimes it's the bad stuff that gets all the, the clicks because, you know, because, <laughs> you know, maybe that intrigues people, but it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, this, you know, not all numbers are created equal. Like, you know, years ago, uh, Vince McMahon looked at that YouTube analytics and said, oh, my God, India is popping. And that th- right. that's when they started. They were trying to – no company in the history of the world has ever found a way to effectively monetize India. And, you know, they – uh, what's his name? Uh, Jinder Mahal. They, you know, they put the title on him. Was, okay, we're going to try to get India. And then they didn't make a single extra dollar in India. A- and, you, you know, and it's not all numbers are created equal. So if I, if I had to really go with my gut, I think that they had some Johnny Swinger segments that were um, in their eyes, popular on YouTube. And then they're like, okay, we got to give them more Swinger. And I'm not going to say he's this horrible, awful character. There are things that he does that I find funny, that I do find entertaining. But I I also believe that you shouldn't overload someone on television. And it feels like every other segment that comes on, here he, here he comes. And I just don't get what he adds to this. Some people, uh, you know, I read my YouTube comments. Some people really like his inclusion in this. And that's that's fine. We just all like different things. But for me, I don't, I don't see why he's part of this. He didn't add anything again, other than kind of getting in Shamrock's face. Shamrock comes in, uh, for the couple minutes he spoke, absolutely put us to sleep. (laughs) And no, 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 this was, this was, this was rough. And then, uh, Michael Elgin comes in, hits him with maybe a, piece of cardboard or plastic because it was very obvious that it was something that bent uh something very weak that he hit him with and um hits him with something takes him down and then he does you know does the uh the chair shot gimmick which which did look you know devastating for um for what it's worth and this the locker room talk i thought the last couple weeks was pretty good but this became a real paint by numbers here's the here's the interview segment we're going to talk to the guy for a couple minutes. Now, here's the sneak attack. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, so so this one I don't think was as good as the one with Havoc and with, um, I forgot, oh, Kylie Ray before, you know. Uh, so th- this one this one was just, just kind of rough. But uh, what, do you, what do you got on locker room talk with the locker room leader? Um. So I got, I, I like it. I'm cool with segments like this for a wrestling show. Um. You know, a little levity is always good, as they say. Um, and the swing man, <laughs> he actually, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say I like him. I'm not going to so I'm not going to go that far. But he does bring something to the table. Like, he's, he's, he has good comedic timing. 
you know, his his little like his little stuff like he was getting in between two of the ladies and he was saying like he was saying he was getting ready to say, Calm down, Rizats. <laughs> But it's just it's little stuff like that. I mean, like you know, the joke of Johnny Swinger is he's you know he's a he's like a a a a, a, a knock like a like a mocking of people who are obsessed with like the Attitude Era, right? People who are you know stuck that that was just the best era of wrestling and nothing can ever compare. Um, he is like the. You know, he's the his his job is to to make fun of that, right? Of the of the people who feel that way, and um, I I think he's funny, man. I think he's funny. Like the you know, again, he's funny because he's not supposed to be like funny, right? He's not telling like you know funny one liners like Jerry Lawler. It's funny, like um, it's funny because of how much a clown he is, like Disco Inferno. You know what I mean? Somebody like that, right? Like it's not. You know, it's funny. Like the joke is, we're not laughing with you, right? Like that's the that's the the the, the, the Johnny Swinger thing. And um, yeah, I just, he's he's funny. You know what I mean? Like he's he's funny. So that's what I think he adds he adds to the show. It's what I think he brings to the table. And um, you know, again, like I already told you, like Madison Rain. You know, look, like, I'm cool. I'm cool with Madison Rain. I don't. I'm not like uh, I'm not like anti Madison Rain. Um, but she has like her. She has her niche that's, like, good for her. And, like, stuff like this, like, the locker room leader thing, like, that's good. Like, that's, you know, like, I'm going to sit here and be annoying. And you're right. Like, it was, like, a paint-by-numbers setup. Like, hey, we're going to start the conversation. Then you're going to get ambushed by by the guest. And, you know, this is what's going to happen. You're right. That was, like, you know, we, we definitely could have saw that coming a mile away. Um and that's just lazy writing. Like, what you, what you say? Like, that's just lazy. Um, but also, we didn't see that coming at first because these are like, this is only like, what, the second or third, the third or fourth week of this, right? So at first we were kind of seeing what is this segment? Like, what are they going to be doing here? And so now that we know that that's kind of the setup, right? It's like you bring somebody in, you let them kind of start talking, and then you kind of ambush them with a guest. Now they have to find some other things to do to keep this segment fresh and interesting. Um but I mean, I'm fine with it. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't if if they if they didn't do this for a week, I wouldn't be like, oh, where's locker room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Madison does an excellent job with it. Though. Her her role, her part in this is is really good, and um, she's really just her with her character right now, like really come into our own uh, more so than ever. So she sounds. She's been sounding good, man. She's she's one of the the highlights of the Impact show, in my opinion, just just in general right now. Uh, then we get Trey versus Rohit Raju, and I, I was I was absolutely shocked that Rohit lost this match. You know, yeah. they're you know they're obviously trying to give him a little bit of a push, kind of teasing that he's breaking away from the Desi Hit Squad. He's getting promos. He is saying that this is his time, basically, and, you know, he loses. I thought he was going to win at Rebellion. We already talked about this. He lost. But then I was like, well, you know, I can see the the story. They're like, okay, you know, he had to wrestle Hernandez beforehand, so um, he wasn't. He didn't get time to focus, mentally prepare, and it seems like you're breaking the dude out. And then he has this match, and this is a great, great match. I mean, I, I've really enjoyed it. But Trey had no business winning the match. I mean, he didn't need to win the match. I think Rohit needed to win it to to advance what he's doing. There's only so long you can have a guy lose and, and tell that story because you're already doing that with OVE right now. Okay, every time we see him, they're going to lose. They're going to blame it on this and this. And then there's another chapter that's getting ready to happen. Like, you're basically running the same storyline with Rohit where it's just like he just still can't win. I mean, this was a, a great opportunity. If you're going to have any opportunity to have him take the next step, you know, have him win in this first round and wrestle Sammy or, or Michael Elgin. I mean, that would have been – I feel like they didn't want to take a chance. Like, oh, we got we, we got to have uh, Trey win because he's the baby face. He's going to wrestle a heel in the next round. Right. You know, so I, I thought this was a, a real missed opportunity to give Rohit the keys and say, let's see where you drive us to, you know, we're going to, we're going to, 
we're going to advance you. You're going to wrestle one of these main event guys who also can c- cut great promos and maybe you guys could make some magic. But instead, I thought they went really, really safe and said, okay, well, Trey's going to win. So again, we know Trey's not going to get to the finals. It's going to be whoever wins in Sammy versus Elgin versus whoever wins between Rhino and Shamrock. And I really hope they don't hold Shamrock out of the tournament because there's he's the only main event caliber guy, and I say that loosely um, on that side of the <laughs> on that side of the bracket. I'm actually picking Shamrock to win this whole thing. Not that I want him to. Yeah, I'm not not that I want him to, but I think he's gonna win it. Um, but what do you got on Rohit Raju versus Trey? <clears throat> So, this is one where I got to give you total credit because I, I, I'm not sure if this is – I think this was on our podcast that, uh, that ended up doing the job and never saw the light of day. But <laughs> we were talking um, we were talking about Rohit Raju, and I was saying how, you know, uh, throughout the years that he's been in Impact Wrestling, you know, they've just – they've done nothing with those guys. And, uh, and I've just been conditioned to look away and not care when he's on screen. And – Ever since the, that conversation that we had, he has been doing outstanding work. Uh, and the promos that he's cut the last two weeks have really stuck with me. And so um, when uh, when the match came up this week, I was convinced that he had a, a shot to do something. And then when he didn't win, I thought it was perfect. Because you got me invested through your promos. And, actually, if I take this back a little farther, he was in a multi-man match a few weeks ago. Uh, I think, was it Rebellion or right before Rebellion? Yeah, it was Rebellion. Um, And I remember looking at that match, and I was just, like, looking at him and thinking to myself, I was like, man, you know, if you look at him, like, you know, he's he's developed. Like, you know, he's he's developing his, his, his physique. Um, he can, you know, his, his in-ring work is good. I was like, you know, we're just – tired of seeing this guy as a loser like that's just the the only the only problem here and then like i said he started cutting these promos and i'm like okay i can see it now i can see it and he even you know you said he's been hinting at getting rid of desi hit squad and he actually came right out and said it he said i was the first desi here i'm the last desi left he said there's no more desi hit squad just the desi hit man and i was like i'm so in i'm like yo he is killing this and so I was invested. And so I was invested, and then he lost. But again, that's good storytelling. Because if you're invested and he wins, well, yeah, you continue in the tournament. But there's also another story you can tell, which is him trying to break the mold of a loser that we've seen him as for the past three years. And I think that they're on to a great story with him and so i just want to see it keep developing if he turns into a psycho because he's losing but i think he's going to snap out of this um he has a bit of a mean streak in his promos and i love it i think he's still a heel and so it's okay to lose if you're a heel because you're going to start cheating to win and so um if you're a heel who can only win when you cheat that's fine because you're a heel and so I think that he is still on the way up. I, 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 they showed his frustration boil over at the loss, and to me, that tells me that the story is going to keep going. So, um, so I actually like it. I thought him losing furthered his story. So I liked it. And um, in the case of Trey, I spent this whole time and having to talk about the person who won. In the case of Trey, um, I really liked what they were doing with Trey and Ace Austin. I thought that um, he kind of started to separate himself from the Rascals a little bit. And I thought you could see that he has a little bit of, you know, kind of something going for himself as an individual. And so I'm cool with the idea of him moving forward in this tournament. He can work. Uh, and 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 he showed some fire, which is something that I hate so much. I hate the wrong word, but, like, so one of the things – that makes me not like so many of these uh, indie-looking wrestlers is, you know, these guys are small, they're, like, underdeveloped, and they just seem like they're playing wrestler all the time, right? Like, they never show fire. And Trey has 
shown a lot of fire. It, it with like when you know when Ace Austin tried to talk to his mom and stuff like that. The way he was just like fire up. I'm like, yo, that's the way you would act if somebody's out here trying to you know do the nasty with your mom. You know, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> um, so so I like that. So I I, I think the Trey showed promise, and I I'm cool with him moving forward. So again, this was another case in this match uh, on this show where you had a winner and a loser who both still come out of this looking strong. Yeah, uh, I thought that Trey and Ace Austin feud had a, had more legs. I, I think that could have gone further. But, um, you know, you, you brought up the end of the match where Rohit was noticeably pissed. Impact, in their prior editing, has been very, uh, I don't know how to explain it, they're usually when someone wins a match, they've been very quick to cut away from the match in the past. Yeah. And, and you're, you're missing that couple seconds of, of drama. And, mm-hmm. you know, they even did like when Eddie Edwards won the world title from Lashley, like I was actually there. So I saw the people, the wrestlers come from backstage and pick them up and do that whole AJ Styles thing, you know, um, Does they do that on TV? no, uh, I think they might've showed it on, like YouTube or something like that. Okay. Right, right, right. But that wasn't on TV. Instead of like, um, Eddie Edwards, new world champion episode of shit, you know, standby for episode of shit's Creek. And then it just cuts right. out, <laughs> you know, uh, I remember Bram winning. Uh-huh. We'll sidebar here. So, so sorry to interject here, but I've been hearing so many people talk about shit's Creek now and it's pissing me off. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> now people want to watch it. Right, 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 right. So it's like, you had, but no, no, it's, it's not just now people want to watch it, but like Impact was the lead into Shit's Creek. So some of their audience is owed to Impact Wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And like, and, and here's the thing too, like uh, as, as much this, uh, you know, again, this is like getting mad at the wrong person here. This is the, the fault of Impact and their lack of, 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 you know, good leadership, but like, you got to be able to sell that if you're impact, you know, like, you know, so it was not a mistake that pop TV said, Hey, we got this good show shit's Creek and we're going to put it right behind impact wrestling, right? Like that's not a coincidence. And it's also not a coincidence that pop TV started popping up in more and more homes. Right? Like, that shit is not a coincidence. And then they wanted to, you know, part ways with Impact Wrestling. And, like, and, uh, you know, part of that is Jeff Jarrett's fault, right? Because one of the first things he said when he came back uh, and, and got control of Impact Wrestling was, I want to get back on TV. It's like, motherfucker. Like, for all the things you can say about Dixie, Dixie Carter, she kept Impact Wrestling on TV. She, you know, I don't know what her secret was, you know what I mean? But she always was able to keep uh, uh, an ace in the hole as far as, well, maybe not an ace, but something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she was able to keep, she kept them on TV. And that's more than than Billy Corgan can say, right? That's more than ROH can say. That's more than a lot of people can say. And so, um, you know, just, just hearing, like, I was listening to uh, the New York ESPN affiliate the other day, and the guy's, hosting the radio show where they were just gushing over how good Shit's Creek is. And I'm just like, man, this is so crazy. Like, I'm like, you know, Pop TV pops up on my cable right when Impact jumps off of there. And now, uh, you know, they're on access and my cable doesn't have uh, access. And I'm like, it, it, I'm like, you know, Pop TV owes some of their growth to Impact Wrestling. And then they, you know, then Impact was off of Pop TV. And they say Access is in more homes than Pop TV was. But still, you know, like I said, now you're on, you know, like a show that you can at least, you know, credit with some popularity uh, or, or take some credit for the growth of is becoming this cult classic. And, you know, now it wants nothing to do with you. So sorry to interrupt that a little tangent. No, you're good. That was just, ugh. Oh. My girlfriend brought it up the other day. Um, oh, I heard this show, Shit's Creek. She's looking for something to watch on Netflix. Or not Netflix, but she's just looking for something else to watch. By. She's like, oh, I heard about this Shit's Creek. I was like, 
Shit's Creek. Um, <laughs> but the but the point I was making, you know, Eddie Edwards won the title, and it's just like we didn't get to bask in it. Uh, right. I remember, specific, I know this is kind of random. Bram winning the King of the Mountain title from Eric Young, and it just cut a you know cut to the next segment. So Impact has done this a lot of time. We don't get to bask in what happened, and when you right. when you cut out too quickly, it's it comes across as we don't care. We, what we just showed you doesn't matter. That's that's how I take it as a viewer. So the fact that they they showed Rohi have this breakdown like that, even though it was an extra thirty seconds, it advanced the story they're telling with Rohit Raju so much. As opposed, to if they you know, Trey wins a match and then they go to the next segment, you know what I mean. Right. So I give them props for that. After that, they did this uh, Cody Deaner thing, which I thought was super funny um, last week. I'm not going to lie, I kind of checked out when it came on, I, so I don't know if it was funny or not. That's what I did this week. I checked out when Cody Oh, no, no, dude, this shit, this, this was funny. He, he's, this was really funny. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, another thing that was funny was the North segment. So last week, I thought the North's segment was one of the worst things I've seen on Impact in a while. I thought it was embarrassingly awful. But this one... Uh, I don't know if it's because I already expected it was going to be something like this, but I thought this one was really funny. And the seriousness of Josh Alexander kind of put it over the top, too. But um, who, did, who did they wrestle? It was... Uh, the Schmoes. Yeah. Yeah, the Schmoes. So um, I just thought the way this one came across, the, the presentation of it was so much better. I thought it was freaking hilarious and last week again last week's i thought was if i could rate on a scale to one to ten i mean it it got a zero from me i thought it was that bad (laughs) but this one this one was good this i like this a lot so what what do you got on that um i mean you know i i i like ethan page uh i can tell he's very creative and i'm a fan of the idea of if you're a production that needs people to wear multiple hats, then let them wear those hats. You know what I mean? Because, um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it just, it it can't hurt. You know, a lot of times you're going to come up with some good stuff. Like I, you know, I like the stuff Sammy Callahan is doing. Um, you know, the, 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 the broken Matt Hardy stuff, like that stuff turned out really well. So if you have stuff that's outside of the box that people are invested in, Go try it, man. You know what I mean? Try it. Throw some up against the wall and, you know, and, and let's see what happens. I was, I haven't been blown away by this stuff, but I'm cool with it. You know what I mean? Again, it's a wrestling show. I don't need, um, you know, I don't need Shakespeare, you know? So, uh, so yeah, it, it was cool. You know, it, it was cool. It wasn't like, it wasn't overly funny to me. It was like, all right, whatever. What's <laughs> Yeah, fair, fair enough. I just thought it was way better than last week's by by leaps and bounds. Uh, they have the Rosemary segment after this, which I'm not even a little bit entertained with. Uh, and I love Rosemary. I do. Uh, she's been super cool when I meet her in public, even when she's yelled at my – one time I kicked her uh, merchandise box by you accident. No, I, no, not her. I kicked her merchandise box, um, and she got in my face – and oh really yeah when you when you say you kicked her merchandise box you mean like you stumbled into it or i stumbled into it it. okay yeah 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 and she uh she got in my face and it was all you know show wasn't like she was really mad but she just gets in my face and she's short you know so she's looking at me like this she's like watch it big foot oh (laughs) you know so Um, I really like, you know, so I like Rosemary. I I think I was saying this before, you know, I think that they're trying to find the next, um, the next kind of, uh, I I guess, uh, the next, the next kind of, um, incarnation of her character. Um, you know, again, when this, when this whole thing started, you know, she was the demon assassin. It was her and Allie and, 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 you know, again, their great story that they did on the Canadian Indies that took so long, you know, so many stops and starts that we never got to fully see that be what it was supposed to be. And, um, 
and she was supposed to be like scary and fierce and all of these things. And then she got hurt. And, you know, since she got hurt, she has not been in the kind of shape she was in before. And I feel even bad saying this because like, I'm a fat guy, but like still, I feel weird commenting on anybody else's fitness, but I'm not a professional wrestler, right? Like, you know what I mean? I don't have to like wear spandex and, and do athletic things on TV. So the, uh, so so it's 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 taken away from the mystique of everything that I was loving about 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 Rosemary and now she's much more of kind of a bit of a comedy character and I like the stuff she's doing you know what I mean I I like it like I'm I'm totally into it um you know like it, it's again it's not Shakespeare right like I'm not like you know it's nothing like that but it does usually involve Tyus and you know, <laughs> so you're on board with that. Yeah. When it involves Taya, I'm in. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, yeah. I guess I have the optimism, optimism that it's going somewhere. That That's, I like Rosemary that much. So it's not like I just completely check out of these segments. Oh, here comes Rosemary. No, I freaking love Rosemary. Um, I just wonder where it's going because it's a very slow burn and right. you, you know so oh, no you know what what actually you know what they are what they're doing they're gonna do like a love angle between her and uh johnny uh johnny bravo that's that's what they're gonna do that's what they're gonna do oh uh, this is gonna be weird but it's okay i mean whatever man like you know what i mean again it's, it's wrestling man. johnny bravo's my dude so if they if they do that i i, I think i'd be uh entertained i think that'd be be funny but no i mean i love rosemary so i just i just want to know where it's going that's all that's all i'm saying i just um uh, i've had a hard time connecting with with what they're doing with her as a viewer but um i'm optimistic about it because she is rosemary and i think she can make whatever work um they they did a throwback aj style this was the segment of the show where it's like what can we piggyback off um Oh, here's Matt Hardy. We haven't shown a Matt Hardy match since he left three years ago or whatever, but right. let's do it now. Um, so I fast forwarded through it. Once I went at first, I was, I was like, oh, who's in the ring? Because I didn't recognize Hardy at first because he was much more mobile and had the, the braids and everything. <laughs> I was like, OK, here's an AJ Styles match. You know, there here's our uh, monthly reminder that AJ wrestled for the company. And then I saw his Matt Hardy, and I'm like, oh, here, here we go again. Um, you know, piggybacking off his uh, AEW first match in AEW the other day. So uh, I'm just, uh, I've, it's crazy. I've been complaining about this segment. I took a, almost a year off from covering this show. I've been complaining about these throwbacks for like two years now. I mean, uh, it's a good two years. And it's like, we still get them. And I know people don't like them. The only yeah. the thing is they are shorter now. They're, they're quite a bit shorter. It took them a while to get that. But, I mean, they've been a bathroom break for people for a long time. And they're just, yeah. they're just sticking to the plan. They're like, we're, we're going to play this TNA shit for you. And you're going to subscribe to the, the uh, I was going to call it the Global Wrestling Network, uh, Impact Plus because of it. But, um, and so... Chris Bay, the segment with Swinger, I don't care about that. Um, next week, we're going to get Willie Mack versus Johnny Swinger. Finally, I hope that this is just done with what they're doing because Willie Mack uh, is ready to take that next step. He's got to work on the promos, but he, he's taking the next step within the company. Um, Michael Elgin's going to take on Sammy Callahan as part of the tournament. Triple XL, who I'm a, I'm a fan of. Uh, AC Romero's cool, but I'm, I'm, I'm a Larry D guy. Like, I'm... I'm liking him a lot, uh, but they're taking on TJP and Falaba, so lots of big dudes in the ring. Uh, and Rhino's going to take on Sha Ken Shamrock if he survives. And then the main event here was Moose versus Suicide. Last time we got Suicide, he was more of a jobber when uh, Caleb Conley was playing the role. Right now it's it's rumored that Wentz is playing that role. Because mm. um, a lot of people have been asking who, who's a Suicide character so that's rumored right now that, that it's him and he's the one i thought it was uh when i first saw him wrestle but 
Uh, the point I was going to make when Suicide was was played by Caleb Conley, you know, he he was more of a jobber. He wasn't really going out there. He was doing cool suicide things, but I mean, it wasn't really competing. Uh, yeah. They just kind of threw him out there, and, and this one's a little different. His, his outfit's a little different. He when he comes out, it, it, it looks like he's trying to do something. And when he attacked Moose several weeks ago, he was supposed to wrestle Moose on lockdown. By the way, um, when he attacked Moose several weeks ago, you know the crowd didn't really react because it's like, okay, you brought Suicide back a few times, and he just comes and does jobs. You know what I mean? He he wasn't an uh, important part of the show at all for a very long time since he was face to face with Hulk Hogan in the ring. So, um, and I'm, and I'm dating back to the Austin Aries segment, but, um, I thought this match was pretty competitive. You know, I, th- I thought it was a good main event. It was a different main event. You know, we're getting suicide in the main event. Um, Moose does the entrance and I mean, he grabs Dave Penzer and you're going to announce this like a freaking title match. I mean, it, the, all, the little details, man, that just make this work. Um, you know, props to whoever came up with this. I was like, Hey, get pens or maybe it was moose. Maybe it was someone in creative, but that small detail, if they didn't do it, uh, would have changed the dynamic of his intro. So I love that. I didn't particularly enjoy the commentary during this because again, Josh was kind of flip flopping between TNA is a title. It's not a title. It's, it's uh prestigious. It was in a warehouse somewhere collecting dust. You know, he was kind of going back and forth. Madison Rain was keeping him locked in, so she she did a really good job here. Some people felt Moose should have kind of blown through him. Um, you know, when you're doing the ref bump and all that, it's probably unnecessary in a match with Suicide. But um, it's it's best right now that we see Moose run through people, and then if if he gets that eventual challenger from the TNA days that, it, that it's, you know, it's a Chris Saban or it's an EC3 or it's an Eric Young or something like that. If it, if it leads to something like this, it's going to be big. Um, so it's best that Moose kind of runs through these guys. But this match was more competitive than I really thought it was going to be. But I liked it and, you know, I dug it. So what do you think? Yeah, I thought it was good. I, you know, I enjoyed it. Like you said, I, it was definitely more competitive than I expected it to be. Um, but to me, <clears throat> this was 100% a performance piece for Moose, right? So, to me, like, uh, it, the, with the match being longer than it should have been and, you know, having the ref bump, it was all just to get some nice heel stuff for Moose, you know what I mean? Like, you know, kicking suicide nuts and, you know, all of that stuff. It's just more adding to the Moose thing. And so, I love it. I love it because to me, this whole segment is about, it's about Moose, right? So Moose, you know, Moose is out here with the championship. You know, Moose is bullying Pinzer. Moose is uh, taking suicide lightly. Moose has the cheat to win. And, you know, Moose is proclaiming himself the champion again. So I love it. Again, I think um, it's a great feature spot for Moose, right? Where, like, the outcome doesn't really matter. The title doesn't really matter. All that matters is that Moose is, uh, is 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 carrying the segment, right? Like Moose is making you care, right? Moose is making you want to see him lose. He, Moose is making you want to see him get rolled up so somebody can take that title away from him. You know what I mean? Anything yeah. just to 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 stop him from acting like an a hole to everybody. So um, yeah, and I thought Moose did a great job. Great job. And of course, Moose gets the win. No jackhammer needed. And I think Josh went through a whole match without mentioning Moose used to play in the NFL. So hmm. he usually you know what I say about, about Moose. I I'm a big Moose fan. I hate that damn spear. I hate that damn rolling spear, man. Really? Wow, well, because Moose played football. Like he knows how to do a tackle. But that rolling spear looks so weak. I hate it. Oh, I, hate <laughs> I, I did. I, the first time I ever saw him do it in Ring of Honor, I was like, I thought it was cool. I don't know. Oh, he's been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He when he came to Impact, he stopped doing it because Lashley was doing the spear, so that's why he did the uh, the discus clothesline. Oh, uh, okay. And it's funny because he called it the Game Breaker, but Pope and Josh Matthews kept calling it the Game Changer. So, <laughs> you know, eventually that's what it became. But 
Those guys were always messing up things. So, uh, but that's the end of the show. Let's go ahead and get into our thumbs up, thumbs down segment. So, uh, I will start with you. What, what, uh, what got your thumbs up? Uh, my thumbs up is going to the open of the show. I loved it. I thought it was just the great, uh, you know, I, I love they used the old video. Um, just, you know, and it was, it was so funny because obviously you knew these guys weren't talking about Moose, but you know, <laughs> it seemed like it was talking about Moose. And it was just, it was funny, man. It was funny and it was well done. And I loved it. That's my, that gets, that segment gives my thumbs up for the show. All right, what about your thumbs down? My thumbs down is going to go to... Uh, it's going to go to the North defending their tag team titles at the Battle Arts Academy in Canada. I mean, like, you know, look, I appreciate the effort, but I'm just not amused. I'm not amused. I'm not amused. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not getting anything out of it. It's not really forwarding any type of storyline it's not really showcasing the north uh the north is ass kickers man that's what they are and so uh, uh this doesn't really showcase them in the way that i like to 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 see them so um you know but again i obviously i understand you know what i mean like they're working with what they got um but i'm just i'm not amused what you want me to tell you all right so for the sake of being different um, even though I thought Moose's op- the, the cold open was the best part of the show or the most entertaining part, um, for the sake of being different, I'm actually, and I know you disagree with this a little bit for we talked about it offline, but uh, my thumbs up, thumbs up was actually the debut of Kimberly just because when she came out, I just, it just caught me off guard. Like, I, I guess I understand she went through the NXT product, but to me, I just expected someone to come out who, who felt new. I don't, I don't know if that, that's a good way. She just came out and just, just her mannerisms, her entrance when she came in, I, I just thought she was just so ready for television. It just, for some, something about the way she came out just really, really stood out to me. And I was, I was impressed. Um, I, I was close to saying the Rohit Raju promo, but, but it was just something about Kimberly's debut that I just, I thought, okay, I can, I can see her progressing into being a knockouts champion and everything was just <coughs> excuse me her presentation I, I was really into uh my thumbs down was rohit raju losing i just thought that you know it was a great opportunity to pull the trigger to see what he can do in a more main event caliber match or actually probably be in the main event most likely of whatever episode of impact is gonna uh you know face the you know have the uh the semifinals. so i just thought for me kind of a missed opportunity but you know, willing to see where it goes with Rohit, but my thumbs up is the Kimberly debut and thumbs down is Rohit losing. So what about your top five, your power rankings for Impact All Wrestling? Right. All right. <sighs> Sit down, zip your lips, and listen up. It's time for TW's T5 Impact Power Rankings for this week. Coming in at number five is the Desi Hitman, Rohit. Raju, as we mentioned earlier, he is breaking away from Gama Singh and that horrible act, the Desi Hit Squad. He's breaking out on his own. He's cutting some fire promos, and he is ready to take off. Even though he lost his match against Trey, he still, is, there's something there. There's something there. You can see that it's bubbling up, and he is going to to scratch and claw and do whatever he's got to do to start coming up as a winner. Uh, number four is going to Taya. Even though she wasn't on the show, <laughs> she did come in on Aftershock, and she completely made that show. I mean, she, you know, she she was she was working her character. Uh, you know what I mean? Like she was she was she was really just. For somebody who's not going to be on the show for the foreseeable future, for all we can tell, she did a good job, you know, keeping herself involved. And, you know, look, what you want me to tell you? I'm a, I'm a tired guy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray, uh, again, she's grown on me. Uh, again, watching her in the ring, man, she's good. She's a smooth wrestler. 
Um, she can do a lot. She has a, a a good character. She's fun. She sticks with it. She's a good Ashley. I can tell, man. Like I, I feel like we are just scratching the surface of what she can do in the ring. And I'm impressed. Like right now, she's definitely one of the hottest things on this show. Number two in my power rankings goes to Michael El uh, Michael Elvin Michael Elgin. <laughs> My, uh, Big Mike tried to murder Kent Shamrock with a lead pipe this week, and um, um, we're not sure if Kent Shamrock is going to make it next week. Who knows? But that was a pretty badass thing. I mean, we just walk up to a man, hit him in the head with a lead pipe. I mean, I think you, you sent your message pretty clear. Um, you, you know, listen, that, that, that's worth number two at least. And number one is going to the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. The legend, Moose, Moose. Um, you know, again, he 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 was the centerpiece of this show. Um, great match uh, uh, against Suicide. You know, not great match in the Dave Meltzer sense of the word, but it was a good segment. You know what I mean? Like his his entrance is badass. Uh, you know, his gear is always on point. Um, he kicked Suicide in the nuts, even though he didn't have to. <laughs> you know, you gotta give a guy credit for, for just do it, going the extra mile. I don't know if you guys have been watching the last dance with Michael Jordan, but listen, if you don't want to play that way, then don't play that way, okay? Moose goes the extra mile to win, win at all costs. And so Moose comes in number one this week on TW's T5 Impact Power Rankings. Did you like him? Did you not like him? What you think? Um, I did like him. I feel like you're going to put Taya Valkyrie in there no matter what. Um, <laughs> she's just going to, she's just there. She's, you know, she's going to be, you know, at least number, at least number four, no matter what. Um, it, even Johnny Bravo is the only one that appears on TV. Well, Johnny Bravo was there. So Taya Valkyrie right, comes in. Right. Where would, I mean, would he be there if it wasn't for Taya? <laughs> it's, it's your boo. It's your boo. Um, <laughs> Oddly enough, my my uh, my crush is actually Alicia Edwards, but um, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but let's see. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm very very accurate. Who's your number five? Uh, my number five was Rohit. Oh yeah, Rohit. So he's he is uh, up and coming. Michael Elgin's found a way. Ever since Rebellion episode one, ever since they've done the empty arena shows, I feel like he's really standing out, finding different ways to stand out you know, with, with his mic work and everything. And, um, yeah, Moose, Moose is going to be number one for, he's got to be for, for a while. Someone's going to have to do a lot to overtake this guy. He's, he's the most entertaining part of the show. And I, he's becoming like kind of the must see, like what's Moose going to do, you know, every week. So can't wait to see what happens next week with the legend known as Moose. So that will do it for us this week. Thanks for checking out, our review here at the Impact Lounge for TWIMBQ, and we will talk to you next time. Peace.